you have a consistent intro occlusion relation. You need to start small. Because you have everything digitally, you have the coordination of all of the multi-units. Hi everyone, welcome back to Xgate Dental. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh, and we are here to discuss new procedures in the field of dentistry. We will provide interesting new cases to exhibit how doctors use our products to solve complicated dental cases. Don't forget to subscribe and follow and stay up to date. Let's get started. Today we have part two of the CAD CAM. Previously what we talked about is different procedures and different advantages that we have with the CAD CAM technologies. Today we are going to discuss different technologies and different methods that exist that we can use to ease some procedures in the process of taking impressions, in the process of having intraocclusion relations, in different types of processes that we do day to day in our clinic but are much simpler with the technology of CAD CAM that sometimes we don't even think about them in this way. For example, here you can see we took relations, interclusion relations using the CAD CAM technology. Now, what does the CAD CAM technology give us that we didn't have previously? First of all, we have in here scan abutments. Doesn't matter right now and what type of parts we have in the scan abutments, but we wanna have this scan abutments on the upper jaw and we wanna have them in relation to the lower jaw. So if it was a traditional method, what we would do is we would take wax, we would know what the height, and we would know the central line. We would know different elements using wax, but if you wanna scan, if you wanna use the CAD CAM advantages, you can't use wax. So what we're using is a composite material. We lay the composite material on the buckle side of the scan abutments. So what you have is the same scan abutments, but you have a rim of composite in the buckle part. The composite material is in relation to the lower jaw. So you have the indentation of the lower teeth. You have everything that you need. You can scan it and you can place the clean jaw on top of the jaw with the composite material. So you use CAD CAM technologies. You're using the intraoral scan and you have the perfect occlusion because here you know where the central line is supposed to be. You can mark the canine lines, you can see the height of the lip line, of the smile line, of the gingival line. You know that height that's supposed to be of the antagonist that you want to design and then you just take this scan and relate it on top of this one. It takes some chair time because you need to build this composite rim onto the scan abutments and it takes a lot of time instead of just taking wax and sending it to the laboratory. But on the other hand, you have a consistent intraocclusion relation every time the patient opens and closes his mouth. You have reliable information because what you see here is what the technician will get. You know that this is the occlusion. When you take the occlusion with wax, the technician can make anything he wants. You don't know exactly what the occlusion will be and you have much more deviations in the end results. In here, what you see is what you get. You see this occlusion, if you think this occlusion is right, you can proceed. You can send it to the technician, but if you think you have a problem, then probably you did something wrong. When you're using traditional methods and taking intraocclusion relations, you don't know what the end result would be because it switches so many hands. You take the impression you need to send it to the technician. It can deform in the process of delivery. The technician needs to take the wax, to take two models, to put them one on top of the other. If it deformed or not, or doesn't fit, you don't know what you'll get. And the next time when you check it, you have already had the crown. You can't be sure that the end result or the end crowns will be similar to the relations that you got. In here, everything is in your hands. You can see it right away and you know if what you got is the same that's in the patient's mouth. Now, when we received feedback from dentists about this intraoral scanner, some of them say that they cannot scan some of the abundance. Some of them say that they have some sort of deviation problem with it. If, as a first case, you try to scan nine implants without any teeth, without any hard tissue, of course, it's as hard as taking impressions using the traditional methods on nine implants for the first time. You need to have some learning curve. You need to start with something small and learn how it works. With time, you understand that you need to have a dry gingiva to scan better. The upper jaw is much easier to scan because of the hard palate that you have. In the lower jaw, you have the tongue and you have a much smaller jaw. And 
many times the gingiva is moving. So for the scanner, it's very hard to scan. In this case, for example, when you take impressions on the lower jaw, the only thing that connects the scan abundance is the composite rim because your gingiva is moving. The scanner doesn't know how to scan when the gingiva each time is in a different place. So we just put a composite rim. Then we scan the composite with the scan abundance and we have something hard, something constant to the composite rim. We scan everything else. We scan the gingiva and we scan the scan abundment. So we'll get in one scan all of the information. The problem is you won't have the gingiva quite as good. You need to start small. You need to have a little bit of practice with smaller work so that you need to see where you have problems and you need to know how to see those problems because it's not always visible right away. And you can scan whole jaws and everything will work when you have enough experience. Now, when you take impressions on multi-unit level in CAD CAM, you can change the multi-unit digitally. You don't have to change it manually. For example, if you take an impression, the traditional method, you can see in the impression that the multi-unit is a little bit higher than you should want it to be and you want to change the height of the multi-unit. It's impossible to do it manually on the model or on the working model. You need to tell the doctor, then the doctor needs to call the patient again, and then he needs to take the impressions again, and then he needs to send out the impressions again. And you start all the work from scratch. With the CAD CAM, because you have everything digitally, you have the coordination of all of the multi-units in the program. So for example, you took on this multi-unit, you can see the crowns a little bit higher. So aesthetically, you would wanna change the multi-unit to one millimeter smaller. To change the multi-unit one millimeter smaller with the CAD CAM technologies, you just click in the program on a button and have a different multi-unit. Then the doctor takes this multi-unit, getting doubt, changes it to a new multi-unit and attaches the bridge that the technician gave him. When you take an impression with scan abutments, you know the place of the scan abutment. When you know the place of the scan abutment, you know the place of all the parts below the scan abutment, the multi-unit and the implant. You know what type of multi-unit you took and what height of the multi-unit you took. So you know the height between the scan abutment and the implant. For example, if you took a two millimeter multi-unit, the height between the scan abutment and the implant is two millimeters. You can digitally change it to one or to three or whatever it is that you want. So the height of the scan abutment will still be the same, but the beginning of the restoration will change according to the multi-unit that you'll use. This is when you take impressions on the multi-unit level. If you take impressions on the implant level, you know the exact position of the implant and with implant level scan abundance, you can choose from all the parts. If you take on two millimeter multi-units and tell the technician that you took on two millimeter multi-unit, he can change it to all different types of multi-units according to the two millimeter that you took originally, even for smaller, and even for bigger. In this case, you can see that originally the original crown that the technician designed was above the gingiva for half a millimeter. After changing the multi-units, the crown was half a millimeter below the gingiva. In the original design, you can see that the base of the crown was about half a millimeter above the gingiva and the base of the multi-unit. But when we changed it, you can see the base of the crown is about half a millimeter below the gingiva. So what you get is a crown that is a little bit longer that won't fit onto the multi-units that the patient has in their mouth. The technician needs to tell the doctor to change the multi-unit from two millimeters to one, and then the doctor can just mount the bridge and everything should be ready to go. This way, you save another appointment. You don't need to retake impressions, you don't need to call the patient again, you save time, and the only problem is you need to have the information of what type of multi-unit you used and what height. The more things you wanna do, the more information that goes between the doctor and the technician. But in this case, you save at least one appointment and a lot of work for the technician because you use CAD CAM intraoral scanner. It's impossible to be completely done with the traditional methods because you have a working model. And on the working model, you can't change the analog. It's inside the model. We talked about multi-unit level scan abutments. Now we wanna talk a little bit more about implant level scan abutments. The difference between multi-unit level scan abutments and implant level scan abutments is that the multi-unit level scan abutment gives you the information according to the multi-unit. If you use a different type of multi-unit, you can change between different types of multi-units from the same category, but you can't switch. For example, 
from straight multi-units to angulated multi-units, because you don't have any information regarding the orientation of the hex, if you took the impression of a straight multi-unit, you can't change to an angulated one. But what happens if you don't know what type of multi-unit we wanna use at all and you're using CAD CAM? In this case, you need to take impressions on implant level. The implant level gives you the relations of the hex inside the implant and the height of the implant. So theoretically, if I took an impression on implant level scan abutment, I can choose to use different types of multi-units, angulated one or a straight one. For example, for this case, we took impressions with implant level scan abutments, but what we wanted to show is the multi-unit on the implant level scan abutments can be an angulated one. You can see the multi-unit inside the mouth and it can be a straight one. You can see it in the modeling. So the one who chooses what type of multi-unit to use is the technician. The technician will see if it can be milled and what type of design is best for this type of case. In many cases, the person who knows the best is the technician because they can see all angles. He knows what type of multi-unit to use best for each case. If you use the implant level scan abutment, on the other hand, it's great because you can choose from all of the options, all type of multi-units. But in here, the most crucial part is how you transfer this information from the technician back to the doctor because sometimes a technician doesn't tell the doctor exactly what type of multi-unit he used. If you use angulated multi-unit, each type of angulated multi-unit has six positions. So in here, of those five angulated multi-units, only one was taken with implant level scan abundance. If we took all the five, you have five times six positions, 30 positions of angulated multi-units. And even if one multi-unit is misplaced, the bridge eventually won't sit on those multi-units and you don't know the problem where and which multi-unit is misplaced and you just can't fit the bridge. So if you use the implant level scan abutment, you can choose between 17 degrees and 30 degree multi-units. And if you choose, for example, the 17 degree multi-unit, you can then switch between the 17 or you can later switch to the 30. You just need to tell the doctor to pass this information so you could change it in the mouth. You'll just get lost when you try to position all the different multi-units in different places and you don't know where the problem is and you just don't know what to do. Here, we can see that eventually the implant level scan abutment was taken and we chose to do one straight multi-unit to avoid the buccal bulge. In the design of the final restoration, you can see that the straight multi-unit with a smaller sleeve, the screw channel goes buccally and distally to tooth 25, and the screw channel is invisible. So it's a great option here to use the straight one. But in here, the only person who can tell you what type of multi-unit to use is the technician. The technician can see if it can be milled, if you can later design and manage manufacture it because when you see the patient in the chair, you don't know exactly what to do. You don't know what type of multi-unit to use. And here we gave the technician all the options to choose from. You can collaborate more with your technician with the information that was sent to them. You have more information, which means you have more options. You just need to choose wisely what type of option you want to use. Thank you everyone that joined in to learn some new and interesting information. Make sure to stay tuned for more. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow. See you next time.